The Mind of Your Business podcast here on episode 103 is brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. That's on a binge.com. Check out all of the great podcasts there on the Binge Podcast Network, whether it's the Startup Life podcast, this podcast, Quotally, Nothing But Buckets, Just Blurting, Let's Be Real, Go Down the Gambit. There's great content for you at on a binge.com, as well as Brooks Brothers Consulting.com. Real retail banking consulting extraordinaire all across the Midwest, helping banks uh, level up their frontline teams as well as CRA. So make sure you check me out at brooksbrothersconsulting.com. Share the show, subscribe to it. Uh, you can email me, ron at the mybpodcast.com, uh, as well as visit the mybpodcast.com for more exclusive content from the Minding Your Business podcast, as well as to be able to listen to any of the previous shows. So thank you so much. Today is Monday, August the 12th, 2019. What do we do? What we do here is go back, 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 back. Thank you so much. I am your host, Champ Ron. We got a special guest that's going to be here in the building today uh, that I'm really looking forward to and uh, have been looking forward to for some time. But uh, just to, before I give the introduction for my guest today, uh, I want to share with you an, a recent award, um, 2018 uh, award that uh, this uh, gentleman and his company won. A Stevie Award winner in the 15th Annual International Business Awards. Please join me in congratulating Seven Stage Advisors of Riverdale, New Jersey, USA. Seven Stage Advisors is the winner of a 2018 Gold Stevie Award for Entrepreneur of the Year in Business and Professional Services for Carl Gould. Seven Stage Advisors addresses the needs of small to mid-market firms in a variety of ways, coaching, mentoring, and training clients on how to sustain growth over an extended period of time. It's an honor to be around such amazing and inspiring uh, business owners and organizations. Uh, you know, I couldn't accept this award. Thank you, IBA, for the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I couldn't accept this without the help of my family, uh, my, my team, and the advisors that are transforming businesses every day. Um, we exist to take your business to the next level. Check your program. We put a gift in there just for you to show you just how to do that. So thank you, and have a very good evening. So, NYB, you got a chance to hear uh, the great award that uh, my next guest uh, won here recently. And it's phenomenal to have Mr. Carl Gould. He's the CEO of Seven Stage Advisors, uh, who's joining us today, NYB. So give a round of applause for Carl. Carl, are you there? I am. Hey, everyone. Hey, how are you today? Really good, really good. Glad to be on. Yep, excellent. Thank you so much, and we're so excited to have you. Uh, we've got the audience here that uh, is excited, and uh, we've been mentioning you for some time here, so everybody is uh, ready to go, and they've got their uh, iPad or whatever they're using to take notes, and uh, so we're getting some thumbs up from, from some folks, which is great. So, you know, Carl, again, thank you so much, and, you know, with you being as busy as you are, to, to take time, you know, to join us here on the Minding Your Business podcast is really special, so we definitely thank you for that. Well, I do appreciate the opportunity, so, uh, all right, you said iPads up, pen and paper in hand, so let's roll. Yep, let's roll with it. So, you know, Carl, let's start out, so for people who haven't heard of you and they maybe haven't heard of Seven Stage Advisors, you know, tell us a little bit of, of your story pathway to how you got to where you are today. Sure, so um, uh, there I was in um, high school, my guidance counselor says to me Carl your math scores are off the hook you ought to become an accountant and I said wow that sounds like a sexy job an accountant oh I'm in <laughs> on that for sure so I went to I enrolled at the University of Delaware went to the, uh, st started studying accounting and finance and um, at the in the second year in school I broke my leg pretty badly and I I needed to leave school but, you know and as a result of me I, my own way and not being able to afford to go back 
I had to find a way to make some money. So I started what became the first business of my entrepreneurial career, and that was a uh, landscaping company. Okay. Started a landscaping company from scratch, uh, grew it, sold it in the uh, early to mid nineties, um, and then started a construction company. Um, I had that uh, company from 1992 through 2004, um, but I started as a coach in 1991. I went to a seminar by Tony Robbins, really loved the idea of personal development, um, helping people set their, you know, set and achieve their goals. So I was doing coaching as a side hustle all through the 90s. So if there was such a thing as a side hustle, that was my, that was my side hustle. Okay. Coaching. Gotcha. Um, so uh, fast forward to 90, uh, 96, I hired a coach for my business. And if there were hashtags back then, my hashtag would have been hang up the hammer. You know, so I could have been, you know, I, yeah. could, get a, I could start running my business and it wasn't running me. And um, I love the process, positioned my company for sale and sold my construction company in uh, 2004. But the business I have today, I started in 02. Uh, seven stage advisors and you know and now I, I get to work with people all over the globe and um, you know uh, help them show them how to grow their business take it to the next level and and um, as an organization uh, achieve their dreams so it's been a, quite an exciting ride yeah excellent and uh, I might have to re- uh, reuse that hashtag hang my hammer <laughs> yeah hang up the hammer baby yeah that was our it was a mantra back then. It's a hashtag now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. So, listen, Carl, so you, you get to this point in 02, you start Seven Stage Advisors. You're helping businesses. And, and I read where, you know, you've helped launch over 5,000 companies and you've trained and certified, you know, over 7,000 business coaches, you know, across 35 countries. So that's a, that's a very active uh, kind of ordeal. So, you know, what are you seeing in the climate today as you're you're working with businesses? Are, are you kind of helping them from the startup phase or are these folks that have been in business for 100 years and just need a little help or where do you kind of fit in? Yeah, our, our, you know, it's, it's actually all of the above because our um, our specialty, uh, we are we are what is technically known as a cross sector innovator. In other words, There was a research study done about the biggest innovations of our time, and over 80% of the innovations of the 20th century all came from the front lines of another industry. Okay. In other words, you pick up one industry tends to innovate another. Um, uh, Back in the 80s, there was a, um, the banking industry was totally disrupted by McDonald's because McDonald's introduced drive through uh, restaurants, and that inspired a bank to try that for banking. Yeah. Apple Computer said, we want to put a thousand songs in your pocket, and at the time, you know, the best thing you could have had was a CD player or a cassette player that put eight songs in your pocket. Right. You know, and, and so they changed the music industry, and, and so we are experts in finding out what works in one industry and then picking that up and dropping it into another industry and also finding what's working for startups and putting it into existing companies and vice versa. So our our expertise is to work with as many wide variety companies and industries as possible because that makes us more and more uh, innovative. Yeah, and and let's stick there, uh, Carl, in terms of the innovation, because that that really struck for me, because one of the things that when I talk and I deal with a lot of people at the startup level when it comes to, you know, helping business owners, and one of the challenges that I tend to see is a lot of companies, particularly existing companies, tend to not have that innovative mindset. They tend to, um, you know, lack of a better term, kind of like in Hollywood, where they typecast people. And they say, yeah. well, this actor can only be the villain or this actor can only be the hero. And it's hard for them to accept, you know, talent that may come from another industry that has some cross-functional fit. And so you know, have you ran up to anything culturally that, you know, when you're working with a business, are you having to help them with the culture of being open-minded to people coming from other industries to, to add value? 
usually that it's not as big a problem when you're starting out because you know you're brand new you'll try anything and you're trying to make a name for yourself um uh, even if you are a me too, as we would say, or a copycat business. When I started my company, my landscaping company, there are plenty of landscapers out there. Sure. I was very much, I was very much of a copycat business. I didn't launch the landscaping industry. It was already there. I was just looking to make it better. So I was, uh, I'm open minded about how I could make it better. Now, if you're a more established company, meaning you've had some success, you've, um, you, you've gotten out there and set, set some goals and achieved them, you might be eligible for a bit of a change in your thinking and paradigm because you're, um, uh, you know, what got you there, you're, you're, you found some success, so you want to stick with it. You know, you're not, not always as willing to change, and that's where you really can get yourself in a rut, for sure. Yep, definitely. And so, you know, where do you see, you know, as you're working with businesses now, Carl, um, are you, is there any kind of trends that you're seeing with them now? I know, you know, today's environment is ever evolving. It, it, it tends to pivot quick. So what are you kind of seeing out there now? Um, well, big difference. I mean, you, um, it, you know, in order to go big today, you have to sell small. Meaning you have to sell your clientele on the smallness or the your agile ability to meet their small needs. And if you can do that, you can go huge. You know, um, uh, it used to be that you would offer a, a very wide variety of services. Um, uh, but now what you need to do is you need to find out those one or two problems that your clients are having, one or two pain points, solve those, and then go outward from there. You know, I mean, we think of Amazon now as this giant behemoth monster company that's ruling the world, okay? And <laughs> right. maybe that's where they're headed. But remember, they started out as just a bookstore. Right, exactly. They were an online bookstore. That's it. Right, but once they mastered books, then they moved into other things. Then they moved into other things. Then they moved into other things, and now, now they are on their way to be what they call the cow, the C O W, the catalog of the world. Right, that's what they want to become. But they remember they started out as a bookstore. Very true. Facebook started out as an invitation only Harvard directory. Yes, that's it. They were, they were as exclusive as you can get uh, before becoming the biggest social media platform in the world. So you, you, you go small in order to get big today, and you have, to, you have to own solving a couple of key problems before you get to solve all of their problems. Yeah, exactly. And uh, our guest today, Carl Gould, of CEO of Seven Stage Advisors uh, here at NYB, joining us. And you know, so so Carl, along those lines, you know, I often hear you know how businesses deal with complaints, and and I want to tie this to what we were just talking about in, in terms of that innovative opportunity. And so, as businesses deal with maybe their service level isn't quite there, how do they incorporate that into some of that innovative thinking? Yeah, uh, particularly yeah. with their business planning and and things of that nature. It's the quickest way to differentiate yourself as a business is to find out what the complaints are in the industry, and then one by one roll them into your business plan and solve them for your customers. So one of the quickest ways to do it is there's three ways you can figure out where you need to innovate next. Number one, read up on the reviews for you and all of your clientele. That's easy enough to find, okay? Um, and if you're not sure where to find the reviews, I can sh I can give you the exact Google search terminology. Now, this is very technical, so I'm glad everybody has their iPads and uh, iPads out and ready to go. So this this is the exact terminology to get the best search engine. Type in your name, your company name. And then the word sucks right after it. <laughs> type in your competitor's name. Yeah. And right after that, type in the word sucks or scam, 
right? Um, and you're going to find out all the negative reviews about you and your competitors, right? Right. And um, <laughs> so look at look at yeah, right? Look at Yelp reviews. Look at the written reviews. Also, go back. So uh, go back to your sales team or whoever handles sales, and think about the objections you were getting along the way. Yeah, but are you available on the weekends? Yeah, 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 I, I get it. But our, um, when I call, can I actually get a human on the phone? Yeah, you know, um, are you guys responsive? Because I've had a problem with that in the past. Think of the objections you get during the sales process because what your buyers are telling you is what they're upset with the entire industry because they've had this problem before. Not with you, obviously, because you're trying to sell them. They've had it with other companies. All right? Um and so that's an area, that's an area to look at. And, um, uh, so be, be aware of that. Understand what the, um, complaints are. And then what you want to do is create an offering, a service level offering that solves those complaints. So we are responsive within one hour. It's 24 uh, 7 accessibility. Here's our weekend phone number. We'll get it to you within 24 hours or your money back. You see what I mean? Right, exactly. You respond to, yeah, you find out the complaints and then you attack them. Yep, excellent. And, and you know, I hope everybody's taking that down because I, I'm even taking notes with that because, you know, going back and searching your company sucks or, you know, company scam or, or any of that and with your competitors, I think is a very, you know, essentially no cost other than your time, but it's so valuable to get that feedback. So um, that's incredible. Um, you know, one of the things that as people are doing that along those lines, Carl, is um, a lot of folks that are listening to this in MYB community, um, they won't relinquish control of their business. Um, a lot of people, they want to hold it and kind of baby it. And, you know, so how important is it, you know, for entrepreneurs to kind of relinquish control as they're trying to grow their business? So as they're reading reviews and doing things to try to innovate and, and really dig in to, to solve uh, real kind of simple agile problems, Carl, you know, how do, you know, kind of business owners and entrepreneurs simultaneously relinquish that control within their organization so that they can really capitalize on the opportunity and don't burn themselves out or miss opportunity by not letting it go. Right. And they don't want to, um, and you don't want to get, um, uh, you're not going to give up control because what you're going to do is, um, you're not going to give up control. What you're going to do is you're going to codify what you do now as the owner, meaning you're going to you're going to identify what the key activities are. Then what you're going to do is you're going to create systems. You're going to create systems for your business, and then you're going to have you're going to have other people then take over the uh, the being the steward, the steward of that system. Yeah. Right. So you're not ever giving up control. You're not ever giving up control. What you're doing is you're building a machine and start to think of your business not as I'm giving up control to, to one person or something like that. Think of your business in terms of the position, right? Not the person, but the position. And everybody's in charge of managing that position. Imagine you're like you're, you're babysitting a machine to make sure that that machine is running well. So we're going to create in the organizational chart, we're going to create a series of tasks and we're going to create... Sorry guys, so a little bit noisy. Oh, not a problem. We're going to... We're going to create. We're going to create some systems in place, and then what we're going to do from there is we're going to have people monitor and manage that system. Okay, so you're not losing up losing control. You're actually gaining control because if you put in the proper system, and then you appoint the person who's going to manage that particular system, then um, you'll actually increase the amount of control that you have. Yeah. Yep, definitely. And that makes so much sense. I think that's helping people because, you know, it's all about perspective, right? And then your mindset towards uh, how you're going to grow when you're um, not so much relinquishing control, as you said, but how you're creating the proper swim lanes uh, to have proper roles within the organization so that uh, efficiency can be realized. So, you know, again, that's, that's phenomenal. 
Um, so as you're doing this and, and you're kind of evolving, and I'm kind of staging this for a reason, Carl, in terms of my questions, but... You know, so you know, as you do that and you, you kind of right size your organization with the help of, you know, kind of your organization, you know, what's kind of important in terms of pricing strategy? So let's just say you identify a bottleneck within uh, an industry and, you know, now you've got a problem that you can solve that's, you know, somewhat repetitive that people will pay to have resolved or mitigated. You know, how, you know, what's kind of important in developing the pricing strategy around that? Hey, Carl, I think we might have lost you or you may be on mute. Oh, sorry. I think I hit mute by accident. Oh, no, not a problem. Sorry about that. So the yeah. pricing, your pricing is the number one way in which you communicate with your clientele. So in other words, the second you announce your pricing, you do two things. You tell your customers who you are. Meaning, am I the luxury version? Am I the mid version? Am I the value play? Okay, not good or bad, but you are announcing what kind of company are you? Are you the Rolex or are you the Timex? Okay? <laughs> yeah, and that's again, good. Yeah, and, and both good companies, you just, what position do you occupy in the market, right? Now, here's the more important thing. The second thing that you do is you announce to the client who they are. So you're saying you're a Rolex, but you're also telling the buyer that they're a Rolex also. Now, not everybody wants a Rolex. So you have to be careful here. So one of so I, I mentioned before, you want to take your top, you want to take the complaints in the marketplace and use that as a differentiator. Then what I would do is I would take levels of service and I would look at the levels of how I serve my clientele. So in other words, I shoot for this. Try to find the top five complaints in the marketplace. Right? What are the top five things, like literally the top five things that are bugging people? And one of the best examples is Netflix. So an extra silver star for anybody can answer this question. What was Netflix's business model when they very first started? Mm. Right? You, you might recall they were just mail order DVDs. Right, exactly. This, that's it. They were a totally offline, unsexy, blocking and tackling kind of company started by a guy who didn't like the late fees that Blockbuster charged. Right. So he started Netflix, one guy in his house. Yeah. And he said, hey, listen, I'm like you. I don't like going to a rental store either. There's a whole bunch of things that upset me about it. And the five things were late fees. You run out of titles. Um, you have to drive there and drive back. And penalties. Yeah. So here's what he did. He said, listen, um, all I ask is that you put your credit card on file and that you walk back and forth to your mailbox. That's it. Just pay for whatever you use. Now, if any of those five things happen to you, you let me know. I'll give you all your money back. Yeah. And that was a pretty bold promise at the time. It's common now, but it was bold at the time. And so... If you, if in a business today, you would take those five complaints and then you would say, um, okay, if I can solve one of these complaints, that's my base level offer. If I can solve three of these complaints, that's going to be my silver version of my product or service. If I can solve all five, I'm going to create a level called platinum or gold and I'm going to charge for that. So I'm going to have a pricing structure that has my entry level offering, my upsell, my, my, my gold, uh, sorry, my silver upsell with say a, three of those uh, problems solved. And then if I could solve all five, that's my platinum, titanium, whole enchilada, um, version of the product and um, I'm going to charge extra for that. That's the first class seat on the airline. That's the limo. That's Uber XL instead of Uber X, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you see what I mean? Yeah. And so I can go on Uber. I can do Uber Pool, Uber X, or Uber XL. Same thing. Wow. Look better best. Yeah. Silver gold. It's a, it's still a ride in a car. Yeah. It's a ride in a car with a group, ride in a car on my own, ride in a car on a leather seat. Yeah. Which one do you want? <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's amazing. When, as simple as that sounds, Carl, it's just amazing how we miss that. 
you know, and how enlightening that is, you know, because a lot of people, I think, just struggle with pricing and, and they're trying to price, you know, services based on um, company financials, right? Either or, or personal financials, depending on the size of the business or if you're self-employed, you know, people are pricing things based on uh, what debt they have, you know, or they're pricing it based on, you know, well, you know, we've got to cover payroll at this amount or we've got to cover that. And those things are important, but it's, it's great to hear, you know, that more detailed level, um, you know, level of strategy or you know, strategic thinking um, when you look at your pricing strategy. That's that's amazing, man. Yeah. So. Right, right on. So yeah. The and and look, you here's here's why I strongly recommend multiple service levels is the chances. So li- listen, everybody, to be very closely on this one. The chances that you are perfectly positioning your pricing and offerings and features, advantages, benefits perfectly for all of your customers is almost nil. All right, and. Why the reason why it's necessary to have three multiple levels is you want to, and you in today's day and age you need to provide a path for your clientele, some of your clientele, to pay you more so they can claim that they are your best customers. Like there is a segment of your pop of your customer population that wants to say they are your best customer base and that they pay the most. And I know this sounds crazy, but think of this for a second, Ron. Yeah. How many people? How many people do you know that bought a luxury anything, a Tesla, Rolex trip to Hawaii, the Express Line at Disney, and then complained about the price? No. Or did they brag about the price? Yeah, the latter. They bragged about the price. The latter. They brag about it. Yeah. You know. You know. You have somebody come up to you and say, "Oh my God." You have any idea what they get you for in that last diamond on the Rolex? Yeah. It's like five grand. It's crazy. Right. No, they're saying, hey, dude, check this out. It's a dream come true. I know it was $5,000, but you know what? Is that important to me? Because I've been thinking about this my whole life. Right. And they will come to you and say, yeah, it was expensive, but gosh, worth every, worth every penny. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and that's what, so when you have that higher level offering, People will pay it and then brag about it. It's crazy. I know it sounds odd. Like the more you charge, the more they're going to brag. Like, yeah, yeah. As long as as long as you're solving the complaints. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the big thing is you're solving the complaints, which is tied to the value, right? So you're. Right. Yeah. Yep. So you're delivering the value. So, um, you know, Carl, you you've won you know several awards. Uh, matter of fact, before you came on the podcast, I played a little snippet um, from uh, when you won the 2018 award. Can you talk a little bit about that? The the small business award that you won. Um, in the business in the uh, professional services category as entrepreneur of the year. Uh, so it was uh, I was nominated for it. Um, I, I was honored to win the international award in 2018, and I I went to London to accept that award, and um, and I was nominated in 2019 actually for the American version, and I was honored to win that as well. So um, it's been a very uh, humbling last 12 months. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, you know, from um, representing the MYB community, we wanted to um, share our congratulations to you on that. I think that's phenomenal. Um, obviously, with what oh, you're sharing, you. yeah, and, and what you're sharing with us today is a reflection of, you know, that value. And yeah, I think of anything to be recognized by your peers is, is always the, the highest kind of form of regard. Um, when your peers see you as uh, kind of a value added expert in, in the field. And so I think that's great. And so you've also written three best-selling books, Carl. Um, you know, Blueprint for Success, uh, The Seven Stages of Small Business Success, and uh, most recently, uh, Biz uh, uh, Dev Done Right. And so, you know, what can people expect? You know, between those three books, um, you know, so that they can get plugged in even more. Um, well, in Blueprint for Success and Seven Stages of uh, Small Business Success. I lay out a very specific uh, growth cycle and very much a roadmap for how you should grow your business, uh, in what order, and what how you um, and how you go about uh, creating sustainable results over time. 
you know, um, you can hustle your way to a million dollars. Um, but if you don't do it in a sustainable way, you can go as back, you can go backward as fast as you go forward. Uh, so that it's very important to make sure that you are, um, you are staying on that growth trajectory. And the, in those first two books, I talk about sequence, right? Yeah. Sequence isn't everything but it is just about everything when it comes to growth you really need to be doing the right things in the right order um you know if you do the right things but in the wrong order uh, you're not going to get the result that you want and we find our you know you asked before like when do uh, companies get stuck and one of the things that happens is they are doing, they're doing what they think is important, not always what the business needs or what the clients want. You know, we say that the personality of a business mirrors the personality of its owner. Right. So if you have an owner who's very operationally focused, well, guess what they do? To them, everything is operations, operations, operations. And there, there are time when operations takes a back seat to sales or marketing or strategy or finance. But the operations focused owner, operations is always number one. A yeah. marketing type owner, marketing is always number one. Exactly. And so invariably, they just get out of sequence and we get them back in sequence. And then, uh, Biz Dev Done Right is a sales produ- production and sales management book. And um, I've, I've just watched so many companies fall on their face one step before the goal line. So, you know, so tongue in cheek, we say biz dev and those two words are spelt wrong and, and done right. And those two words are spelt right. Um, so we, we try to help people correct some of the mistakes they make in their business development and um, uh, help them get it right. Yeah, excellent. And so where can people find your books, uh, Carl, if they, you know, they're interested in getting a copy? Well, a little bookstore we talked about a little earlier, Amazon. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> certainly find them there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, also on carlgould.com. Uh, you can get a copy of any one of my books there. So um, uh, either, either way, um, I love the fact that I get a chance to get the word out. So either way, um, I'm glad you get the opportunity to uh, share in some of the distinctions I've made over the years. Yep. Excellent. You know, and so, you know, Carl, this has just been phenomenal information. I mean, I'm here taking notes. I've got people, uh, you know, sending me inboxes that they're taking notes and, you know, they're on your site now and then that sort of thing. And so, yeah, as we wrap up, what are, you know, you've given us a lot of great nuggets, but what are just kind of like two or three best practices that you've come around? I mean, you've been doing this a long time. Um, and you started your business back in 02, which, you know, I mean, to many people, that sounds like 100 years ago. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, what are two or three best practices that you'd like to share kind of with the, the podcast audience? Sure. Uh, the first one is that no matter what business you think you're in, you're in the marketing business. Okay. I don't care what you sell. I don't care what you service, what you produce. The, mar- the lead generation engine is first, always never stops, never takes a break, never goes on vacation, has to continuously be being executed because the, you know, a uh, lead generation funnel is kind of like putting your watermelons into a, into a garden hose, right? Right. Or, you know, like when a snake eats something, you know, you see that lump go from the front and then to the back. It's the same thing. You take a month off from lead generation, I guarantee you a month or two or three later, you're going to have a dead month because your sales cycle will have nothing to spit out uh, if you didn't put it in. That's yeah. number one. Um, no, number, number two is um, you do not ever, ever, discount your way to market share uh that was that's an old strategy that's a strategy from another generation in other words if you're just getting started you don't say well i'm just going to drop my prices so i get my name out there and i get a little foothold you don't need to do that anymore all right if richard branson started a new business he wouldn't say oh uh I'm going to discount my services so I can get my name out there. Nobody knows me for this, so I'll just discount my way to get some traction. He wouldn't say that. Here's what he would say. Oprah Winfrey wouldn't do it either. But here's what they would say. They would say, I'm now available to you in a way I've never been available before. So come and get me. Here's what I charge. Yeah. All right. And we have so many channels now to market our services. 
and market our expertise. Just because you're new in business, it doesn't mean you're cheap or inexpensive. Charge what you, the value you bring, and you will attract the people who value what you do. Yeah. So I know I know that sounds hard in the beginning, especially when you have to say no to a few people. But charge for what you're worth. Yes. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a great way to, to kind of summarize, you know, everything that we've talked about today is, um, you know, obviously you're in the marketing business, as you said, number one there, Carl, and, and number two, don't discount. Charge what you're worth and solve the problems for the people who have them and that are willing to compensate you properly uh, to assess that value. So that that's just phenomenal stuff, Carl. Listen, you know, thank you so much for being here on the podcast, man. It, it means a lot. It's it's great information. Um, you know, my gears are turning. I'm sure everybody here that's listening or that's you know live or that's going to listen to this uh, podcast here a little later is, is going to pick up some great nuggets. Um, I know you're a busy guy, but I appreciate you. Thank you uh, for everything that you're doing uh, to help business that's you know near and dear to all our hearts. And it's what drives the world's economy is small business. And when you've got people like you out, um, you know, helping people level it up. Uh, I think that's a beautiful thing in my opinion. So thank you, Carl. Um, I look to remain connected with you. If you ever see where I can be of value uh, to, uh, for you or, or kind of your network, let me know. And um, I look forward to being connected. But thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And and to all your listeners out there, um, as my gift to you, if you go to carlgould.com on the Contact Us page, send me a note and in the subject line, put the words business analysis, and uh, someone from my team or me will give you a two-hour growth consultation, and it will culminate in us giving you up to five growth strategies for your business. Out in the real world, we charge fifteen hundred dollars for this service. Um, but anyone listening here, uh, if you're since you're on this call, um, I'll do it at no cost. So, oh if wow, you want to take us up on it? Yeah, take us up on it because we'll give you some really good strategies, and um, you know, uh, hopefully, we'll our our paths will cross again. Yep, absolutely, and that that's almost unreal to get you know two hours of you know kind of you know eventually essentially no cost kind of consultation and strategy discussion that that's almost unheard of carl um and so uh, you definitely Happy appreciate that and uh myb you definitely need to be taking advantage of that if, if you don't do anything else the rest of this week um you need to go ahead and get on the schedule for that so carl thanks again my friend and uh best wishes to you personally and professionally you got it, and I apologize for well, there's some emergency announcements in the building. I'm in here, so no. I thought that went, went from quiet to a fire drill in, in, in the time of our podcast. Hey, this is... We made it through Hey, this is a raw podcast. We don't do any editing or anything like that, Carl, because I want uh, people to see that that's how business is ran. There's, you've got to be able to operate even amongst the distractions. And so um, that, that's how we operate. So, no, that, that's great stuff. And, again, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks again. All right. See you, Carl. Bye-bye. So that was Carl Gould, CEO of Seven Stage Advisors. Uh, out in New Jersey. Listen, you need to go to Carl Gould, C A R L G O U L D dot com. That's where you need to go. You heard the offer. That's fifteen hundred dollars worth of value MYB that he's providing. Uh, you need to go to the website Carl Gould dot com and to contact us. You need to put in business analysis and mention that uh, you heard uh, about him through the Minding Your Business podcast. And that way to make sure that you get your two-hour growth strategy discussion. Think about that. You can cover uh, a hell of a lot within your business or even proposed business in a two-hour conversation with someone, whether it's Carl or someone on his team, um, to help you really get launched and get moving in the right direction. So that's that's extremely rare. Uh, not a lot of people that come on this podcast or just around will lend that kind of time to you. So carlgould.com make sure you put in uh, go to contact us and go to business analysis uh, or put in business analysis and uh, make sure that you get two hours of growth strategy dialogue uh, again with seven stage advisors uh, normally a $1,500 value for free so I hope you got great uh, insight today um, from our guest uh, Carl Gould thank him so much 
Uh, thank you so much for liking and sharing uh, this podcast for all of your support uh, over this time. We've just crossed over two years uh, with this podcast, so we're extremely excited. We've got more contact uh, content, excuse me, coming uh, here soon. More great guests, uh, more information from me, and so we're just going to keep this thing moving the way we needed to move. Back, and so. Back, back, back. Thank you so much. Uh, My work here is done. I'll be back with you on another episode of the Minding Your Business podcast. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. Champ Ron.